sun. Any weather and stuff, weather patterns are coming from the radiant energy of the sun hitting the earth. So the, the source of the energy, the ultimate source of energy uh, in the earth is the sun. So when the sun radiates energy, we have to understand it's either reflecting energy that comes from a higher source or it's been charged up with energy from some outside source. Let's take this argument all the way back to the beginning of creation. In the beginning of creation, you start out with matter. So matter is sitting there. The pradhan is just sitting there. The sum total of all material elements. And what is it going to do? Nothing. Because matter is inert. But then what happens? According to the scriptures, the Supreme Lord glanced over the Pradhan and impregnated the Pradhan with his energy. The creative energy of the Lord is the original injection of energy that gets the Pradhan into motion. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there at absolute zero and do nothing. The atoms won't even move. They won't, won't even demonstrate Brownian motion because there's no energy. The energy has to come from someplace outside the material creation. Otherwise, there's nothing to get the matter going. It's just going to sit there like that rock in the desert or like that dead body. It's just going to sit there. It's not going to do anything. Therefore, the Lord has to inject the original energy of the creation into the material potency for it to become active. And he also injects the spirit souls. And because of the presence of the spirit souls, then living beings develop. Similarly, he has to inject intelligence because matter has no intelligence of its own. Uh, somebody brought up the idea a while ago that matter follows laws. Yes, it follows the laws of the universe, the laws of physics. But where do the laws of physics come from? There has to be an outside source of information that structures the material energy into its present forms. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there in a lump. Matter by itself has no intelligence. It has no consciousness. It has no energy. All these things have to come from outside the material world. And at the beginning of creation, the only thing that exists is the Lord himself. There's a shloka. Aham me vasam eva gre nan yad yat sarasat param paschada ham gareta chcha yova shisheta so smyaham. Brahma. It is I, the Personality of Godhead, who was existing before the creation when there was nothing but myself. Nor was there the material nature, the cause of this creation. That which you see now is also I, the Personality of Godhead. And after annihilation, what remains will also be I, the Personality of Godhead. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam 2.9.33. So the Lord says, I was existing before the creation when there was nothing but myself. In other words, the material energy was in an unmanifest state. That's the meaning of pradhan. Pradhan means the material elements in an inert state without any energy. Then when the Lord glances over the Pradhan, the Prakriti is created. Prakriti means energy and matter together. So when the Prakriti is created by the Lord injecting his energy into it, then time starts to act on the material energy and creates the effects of the three modes of material nature. And from the three modes of material nature are generated all different kinds of living creatures and activities. So that's the story of creation given 
in the scriptures. And that makes sense because we know that matter by itself doesn't do anything. But all of the uh, theories of creation given in other sources, and by other sources I mean everything but the Vedas, basically assumes that matter has its own intelligence, its own initiative, and can act independently to organize itself. However, we never actually see this happening in nature. Huh? When matter becomes organized, it's always due to the presence of either energy or life. And we've already proved that matter by itself does not generate energy. It has to get its energy from some outside source. And the only source that's outside of the material world is the spiritual world. Therefore, God, Krishna, Narayana, Vishnu, is the source of not only the material energy, but the energy of the material energy. Huh? And also the uh, impulse that creates life, the jivas. The jivas come from the marginal potency of the Lord, huh? the jiva tattva. So that's internal energy because it's spiritual. But when it comes into the material context, it gets covered over by the material energy. And that's what a material body is. The material body is simply the covering of the spirit soul. So because we're covered by material energy, we tend to perceive everything in terms of material energy. And then we identify the material energy with the symptoms of the soul. Consciousness, intelligence, activity, life energy, personality, individuality. Actually, all these things are symptoms of the soul, not the body. We only, they only appear to be associated with the body because the living entity, the jiva soul, is associated with the body. And as soon as the jiva leaves the body, the body falls down inert, dead. That's the proof. And all these symptoms, consciousness, activity, life energy, intelligence, personality, identity, individuality, initiative, creativity, emotions, communication, thought, etc., 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 all those symptoms disappear along with the soul. So we can understand that those symptoms are actually symptoms of the soul or of the spiritual energy and not matter. Because if they were symptoms of matter, then they would remain after the departure of the spirit soul. Are you all following this? I guess so. There's no kind of slowly. Yes, yes. Well, if, you, if your question is relevant to the context, go ahead. Yes, Neville, there is consciousness behind matter. It's the consciousness of the Supreme Lord. Matter has no intrinsic consciousness because matter is dead. It's only the presence of the soul or the super soul that allows matter to organize. For example, uh, if you study philosophy, you come into something called the anthropic principle. The anthropic principle is, states that the universe that we observe around us is favorable for the appearance of life. For example, so many universal laws and the constants of material nature are seem to be tuned just for the arisal of carbon-based life forms, 
such as our, our material bodies. So why is that? It seems like there's some kind of indwelling intelligence in the universe. For example, if, if Planck's constant was just a little bit different, then stars couldn't exist. Uh, subatomic reactions uh, would be totally different than they are now. And uh, so uh, different atomic and chemical reactions, and in fact, if, if E, the, uh, uh, the nuclear constant, was different by just a tiny amount, atoms themselves couldn't even exist. So matter as we know it would be impossible. So assuming that the laws of the universe are constant, they don't change, and that they're the same everywhere in the material universe, which actually is the basis of science, 